Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing the Korea run because there was a lot of uh, agitation, let's say, for the continuance of the Korea run. We have a nice East and West Korea, a tale of two Koreas, as it were. Uh, shout out to Koreas. Uh, and we will be continuing uh, and trying to specifically get off of traditionalism. This is the most critical thing that has yet to happen. This is what's really preventing the pop-off. We're only getting 55 construction a week. Uh, to be fair, we are getting enormous amounts from Diplo packs from both France and Great Xing. Uh, uh, great, France, very importantly, the one that we went for uh, in order to get recognition. In retrospect, um, so a viewer told me or mentioned that the uh, Heavenly Kingdom actually, the Heavenly Kingdom actually uh, opens their borders. And had we known this, we actually probably wouldn't have done the second war with Qing for Shangzi and war reps, which to be fair are going to allow us to construct more. The reason being is if they ever open their borders, this is going to be really, really nice for us to be able to siphon off pops um, through mass migrations, uh, which... As far as I can tell, still getting used to the 1.6 uh, new migration system. As far as I can tell, the mass migrations happen more uh, if you accept the pops and the borders are open, these sorts of things. Uh, and so uh, I think you need to have the open borders. And so this is what's preventing an exodus of Han pops. And so we would prefer if it was Heavenly Kingdom and they would just allow mass exoduses and we could just accept all of those pops. So that's kind of thing one, something we could have done better. But we are, we, we're here where we are. Uh, we have 50 million pops. We're really good shape and i think we're in really good shape in particular for a dream of building like super tall um maybe taking manchuria and uh shenjing of course i think we would not want to incorporate shenjing we'll kind of talk through new migration strategies but i think that we want to build really tall in korea i think we have really good states for building tall we mentioned this at the end of last episode we have on a per state basis we have some of the most resource dense places um in the entire game that we have incorporating here and we also have an enormous population base from which to like try and pop off and so we're going to try and build a little bit tall here um i think building tall is going to get way better in spheres of influence but we're going to do our best um to kind of move in that direction and that's going to start off with trying to get off of traditionalism okay so we pop a revolution which was we were planning on doing uh and it's actually a pretty awkward one because both the chinese states secede to be fair what we could have done is we could have stopped uh, with shang -Zi specifically, we could have stopped incorporating it. Generally, uh, they will not rev if they're unincorporated, and so that might have been a little bit of a, a better looking play. We will probably... I mean, well, okay, this this makes things easy. In some of our testing in 1.6 in particular, uh, the UK is willing to side against us, even if we're in their customs union and revolutions. And so this has been an interesting point. So I was going to make a little bit of a song and dance and speech about the importance of uh, swaying the UK, uh, but they just kind of join our side anyways. Uh, and so this will this will likely be extremely easy. But the very critical thing is now the clout is really much in our favor for the passing of these laws. And so we will be able to get on the last a fair very quickly which is going to be spectacular and then getting this guy out of out of business should be in order uh because yikes uh psychological affliction uh expensive tastes and uh wrathful big like the opposite of nice and so uh hopefully we can get him out from power after this revolution by going something like parliamentary republic uh something like this will be pretty good for us we get a defensive pact offer from the uk now the uk was cautious before they joined on our side which was something that's a little bit curious and I think we're kind of okay with the defensive pact offer from the UK. I'm trying to think. So we will have to help them out if they get revolutions. I forget if we have to help them out if they get revolutions against their subject. But what we can do is we can just honor the call and then uh, capitulate quite quickly. Um, and this is somewhat attractive, that way Great Britain helps us out. But I think Great Britain's generally more likely to help us out in a lot of spots because we are in the side of their customs union. So we'll say no and we'll look to just keep this float of influence uh, so that we can use it. Now, we freed up a ton of authority, we're going to look to spend that. Uh, but we're still going to go for a max bar float for the minus 25% enactment time just to try and rush laissez-faire first or quickly before, you know, these guys who are revving can come back up and before they get strong. Uh, while they get marginalized. They're not marginalized, super marginalized yet, uh, but this did help our clout out on the industrialists quite a bit. Not because, mainly because we lost a ton of uh, this incorporated states uh, over here that had a ton of peasants, uh, which were making up an enormous chunk of the clout. So this is, it's easier to reform small countries. We've effectively become a smaller country again, a much smaller country, losing most of our population. And so um, as a result, this is why the clout on the industrialists is a lot 
better. Not these guys being reduced to nothing now. Very nice. Now, of course, we are going to hold back our company because what we want to be using uh, is going to be the Kaiping Mining Company. Actually, you know what? Our first company can probably be Iron Company over the Kaiping Mining Company. Generic iron should serve us pretty well. We'll also get lead from there, and then we will be able to do the Kaiping Mining Company uh, later. Is that in Antainable? Potential companies? It's usually at the top of the list here, uh, but the Kaiping Mining Company is a railroaded coal company that is uh, centered in Beijing, and this one will be quite strong. We don't quite have access to it just yet because we obviously lost access to Beijing. So a huge part of laissez-faire getting activated is that it effectively unlocks your investment pool if it's been growing hugely, which has definitely been the case for us because this is actually a positive modifier. Now that the darkness is over, now that we've gotten past the troubled times of the construction queue bug, plus uh, private construction allocation is actually a positive modifier because it allows, allows you to contribute a higher percentage to of the loud cars uh, to your investment pool, to your construction good. Before on traditionalism, we could only contribute a quarter, uh, you know, to cover the construction good cost. Now we can contribute three quarters, which in theory is kind of bad because it lets us have less control of the queue. We're now only controlling 25% of the queue here. And it's like, oh, this is terrible. But what it lets you do in terms of the math, how it shakes out, it is barely lets you get less nominal control. You'll get less percentage control of your construction queue. But what you get to do is you get to add more construction sectors. You get to build more of everybody's favorite thing, the construction sector, and then you feel good about yourself. Now, this is without us even having Beijing. Once we get Beijing, we should be like cranking up or once we get these provinces back we should be cranking up to maybe like one to two hundred construction and really popping off off the back of this uh we of course do have a little bit of a native uprising a little bit of an oopsie sorry we colonized you down here uh but we will be handling that as we do uh and then handling this up here which is you know we're pushing in everything's going reasonably well um you know in retrospect oof, Everything's going reasonably except, well except for that. In retrospect, maybe monarchy is not the play right now uh, because we're going to get this massive rev again. I don't think we want to re-rev. Okay, we're going to come off a of monarchy. We got what we wanted anyways from this presidential republic. And while we, uh, we hate our king, I, I guess he's the only king for us. Uh, the truth hurts, uh, but we will go on to religious schools uh, because this one will be pretty solid. Uh, and the Confucian scholars, we're going to lean into them a little bit because they actually have a ridiculously good bonus. And maybe we can sit on this bonus for a while and then be able to pass some good laws because minus 100% radicals from standard living decreases, very strong modifier. We're going to be getting it. We haven't been getting it all this game. And this is one of the things that can make Korea better because if you have this modifier for an extended period of time, you know, the great happiness, the big nice, what you end up doing is you just kind of harvest the uh, the bonuses really easy from your various interest groups. And so playing around and leaning into these could be good. We also want to experiment maybe a little bit with staying on state religion. We'll see how that shakes out. But for now, we will be putting these uh, little bit of troubles down. Notice as soon as we put down this rev, these guys go down from having a ton of clout to having basically no clout. We will we'll just like let the game on pause and see how it just craters down. And instead it all goes to these guys. And this is the result of having so, so many peasants in these areas um and you know the cloud can't go the to the young band officials because they were just part of a rev and instead it's all going to the confusion scholars which is going to allow us to pass you know the law pretty quick um unfortunately we're not getting this bonus i'm not 100 percent sure i felt like we would be getting this bonus um but uh you know passing oh are they indifferent to the religious schools is the question they are indifferent to the religious schools. They do be like that sometimes. Well, the industrialists will lead the way and try and pass it. We actually slotted the intelligentsia out of government, uh, but I guess we're going to stick with it and we'll maybe try and get something the Confucian scholars like. Uh, that's not quite ideal, but uh, maybe they will like us, you know, passing a whole bunch of laws. Um, enactment chance. Hell yeah, brother. We're, we're for it. And we can now kind of crank up the construction, re-add a bunch of the construction sectors that the revolution deleted. And I do believe we got railroads too. Uh, so we'll add some railroads, uh, you know, and get everything going. Hopefully there's not too much turmoil here. There might be a bit of turmoil. Nope, just some devastation. And so we'll put down some decrees, namely promote social mobility, which is the two decrees we really, really want in these areas. And then... Do we want road maintenance anywhere? Um, kind of like having this really, really large float. Uh, we will need to switch up some things. Road maintenance... 
I mean, I think maybe we are building in these places. Let's build in Beijing a little bit first, and then later we will swap off of Beijing. We do want to, you know, put in some construction sector, some railways, and so maybe this one's uh, pretty solid, uh, but we will be getting enactment time, which is going to be nice for pushing laws through quickly. I like doing this a lot on kind of the smaller starts, especially we don't have a really robustly built economy yet. If we do one of these taxes, it's really not going to allow us to build too many more construction sectors, um, you know, from a single one of these taxes, and so perhaps the authorities better spent passing the laws just a little bit faster. It looks like us parking interest in, uh, you know, La Plata is maybe going to pay off here. We see we can sway for an obligation, but what we can do is we can see if we can maybe try and sway using a yo-yo sway where we join one side. Oh, and we have to settle this war first. Hmm. All right, we'll propose this peace deal. And then you come back and sway to the other side. And because they're like, wow, we're screwed, uh, they become much more willing to sway to the other side and we ask them to become a protectorate. And in this way, we get the protectorate on Argentina for freezies, good dealsies. Um, this is the best deal of all time, uh, which is gonna be super nice for us. Uh, the cool Ronnie's trying to sway us back the other way. I don't think so, my guy. We are just gonna instead have a free subject in the way of uh, you know Argentina, which is gonna be super, super nice for us. We're also gonna stand down our army because uh, we didn't get a chance uh, to stand them down. We maybe help them out. Uh, they should be able to deal with Gorani themselves, but it's oh, okay, fair enough, fine enough. Um, and then we will uh, be able to declare a play somewhere. We'll take a look around, see what looks good. We have zero infamy, we're close to it, so we would do want to accrue a decent sized chunk, uh, but we will consider this kind of well and handled. And also, it's going to give us a native interest in the area, which is going to be quite nice. I think we had put in on Congo, don't know why that got uh, moved away, and maybe we can get some stuff done. Um, let's uh let's maybe intervene in something if something happens up in here we maybe would be able to help mexico out against the usa depending on how things shake out or even texas against either one of them uh and maybe that can be a good play for us to do but we'll look around for something to declare ourselves so it's looking like we're gonna have a little bit of a tussle with portugal portugal's not very strong in this run and we actually don't want them to back down because we have put in here uh conquer portuguese as mozambique and if you have any sort of infamy war goal that's not primary you really don't want people to back down so for the congolese war goals we are going to make them primary to make it less likely for them to back down we're also going to move some troops into position uh, as it were uh to get ready to land we're going to make this guy uh this is going to be part of our landing squad i just want to clarify if it's something when we talk about having this landing squads half cavalry half infantry the main idea behind these squads is to not have to fight on the landing cavalry is not very good when you're fighting on the landing but if you are uh just getting in for free cavalry Cavalry is insane. And so it's uh, the purpose is to have this flexible army that can get in, is absolutely insane when it gets in for free because you can push very, very quickly. It can sometimes get in through light resistance. And then when it is eventually opposed, the combination of cav and infantry can hold the line for a slight period of time so that you can have time to bring in a reinforcing army. But it's not meant to be, uh, it's not meant to break a very, very difficult landing. This is not the purpose of these armies um, to like land in some spot that is is extremely difficult uh, and so this is going to be what we are going for here uh, we should be able to manage it pretty well because they didn't put anything they kind of didn't move people to front uh, I suppose we're gonna bring this other guy in just so we don't uh, you know get backdoored a little bit here but we should be able to get grab all this stuff if they start a landing on us which it appears that they are they're standing starting landing that's super fine we will just mobilize these guys uh, and have them defend and they will be able to defend just fine against a Portuguese landing uh, we also will take a little bit of a look at laws. We just finished water tube boiler, kind of fishing, finishing out the very, very essential opening sorts of text. And I think what we're going to go for next is we want to get onto pharmaceuticals, I think, um, so that we can get public health insurance with our, uh, if I'm not mistaken, oh, we might actually, I actually think that our, our guys are indifferent uh, until we get the later law. These Confucian scholars, I think they don't care about public health insurance, if I recall correctly. Yeah, they don't. And so getting public health insurance is actually less of a priority than normal. Well, we have a really good company in the Kaiping Mining Company, and so I guess we're going to kind of work towards corporate charters, and so to that end, I think romanticism is going to be what we want to research, because greener grass campaigns is actually quite strong, and we might start using it. So we're going to put in on romanticism here. 
Now, in terms of what's going on, there's a little bit of an elephant in the room, and that is our bureaucracy problem. Uh, the Rev deleted a whole bunch of government administration centers, which of course we don't like. Uh, and so we are trying to get our construction up at the same time though. And so we've added up enough construction so that we're actually draining this investment pool. I think this is still not quite enough. So we're gonna add a couple more levels of construction sectors, but following these, we are going to be getting a railway and then we will kick this to the back and then we will be getting government administration specifically in Beijing we're going to build up to level 21 which is our current economies of scale cap and then we will turn to Shangzi and probably do the very same thing um, which should cover this and then we maybe even want to push it a little bit further for the purposes of being able to upgrade our education level but this is uh, uh, a something what, what is it an elephant in the room uh, as it were uh, and is one of the reasons why we have decreased uh, this a whole bunch uh, because if the tax is not going to bring into our coffers anyways then we don't want to be taxing a lot also a huge portion of our income is still the diplo pact uh, even though we have lost the war reparations from great Qing, we're still getting a ton from the french republic and so this um because of this we're going to be playing in this way uh to hopefully be able to get some things done now we'll perhaps talk about this more later but i think that colonial resettlement is actually going to be really strong with the new migration system because it gives migration attraction in unincorporated states i think what the meta is going to be is you are going to fight for mass migration attraction which is going to involve incorporating fewer territories and then you use something like colonial resettlement to redistribute all the migrants you pull into your incorporated territories which is really substantive because you're getting mass migrations and instead redistribute them to your unincorporated territories also we are going to have kind of the classic china problem which is that we will tend to have a lot of unemployed pops um, at least at the beginning of the run and colonial resettlement can help us to move these unemployed pops um, away as just as soon as we're able to form a cultural community which is a new part of the mechanics and we'll kind of probably be unpacking this later but we're going to go for colonial resettlement which i think in light of this uh you know migration change is going to become a whole lot stronger now we're still involved in this war we are making progress it should be resolving our way um you know these guys won't be able to resist our landing portugal is trying to land us they don't know what they're doing go home portugal we might even try and land them because they just have this nine stack back there uh and so once this 11 stack is done with congo we might go and land Portugal just to enforce a little bit faster but we have plenty of infamy and so we're good to go and we should be you know as soon as this comes down um, or as soon as we solve the tax waste we probably increase taxes look to add even more construction because we still have a huge investment pool to drain out and then from there um, you know we look to add universities building up to EOS in the same way once we get to maybe 150 to 200 ish construction which we're not that far off of so we are going to try and use the yo-yo sway method here on Mexico we see that they have you know some things that they are willing to give us what we really want is transfer state specifically California and so we're going to give them a little bit of a pucker moment by pretending to side with the USA in order to see if they hey maybe change their mind maybe they're willing to give us you know something something a little bit special like California it looks like they're not willing to give us something special in that realm uh, we could ask for obligations we could ask for diplomatic packs I think we're going to ask for bankroll which is going to improve our relations and collapse their economy and so uh, we will We'll be moving on over some troops to help them defend uh, if they are going to give us a nice little bankroll and we just need to defend against the USA it's no big deal it will make the USA not like us this is something substantive also we kind of get a little bit of a kick uh, you know in the nethers because uh, the French uh, is experiencing a revolution which is unfortunate for us because they were in fact paying us war reparations and so we get uh, you know the stool kicked out from us a little bit early before we managed to get kind of our bureaucracy problem solved and we also see that's going to be bad for the usa <laughs> mummy decides to also help out and so this almost means that we don't really need to mobilize too much um we'll still mobilize some guys we'll still send them over but this is probably going to mean that the usa is in for a little bit of a rude awakening and is probably going to have to return utah to mexico all right so we now have access to the greener grass campaign and so what we can do is we can actually really kick up the average of our incorporated states in terms of the migration and traction currently we have like 10 20 20 uh these are not very high numbers but what we can do is we're not going to pull up these these are not going to be they're incorporated but we're not going to pull up the migration and traction very much here instead what we're going to try and experiment with uh in this run and especially other runs uh is we're just going to do this because from this we are getting both a f uh, flat 20 as well as 25 percent 
um, from this. And so this is going to crank us up to a much higher level of a 61, which this is the average of we have eight incorporated states, um, or sorry, seven rather, right here. We have five and then two of the Chinese states. And so this is going to crank up our average uh, mass migration attraction, which I think is going to be what we're supposed to play for. Um, of course, uh, we will probably have to save and load if the thing is bugged out. Let's take a look at it here. It teased us with it. All right, we're going to be right back. All right, so uh, this pulls up the average up to a whopping 43. And you see here, we have a bunch of places that are in the 50s and 60s. I'm not 100% sure this is gonna be the metagame. I think this is gonna be much stronger for European powers where you can get uh, the mass migrations of all the Europeans much, much easier. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how discrimination with mass migration works, uh, but this I think is really, really powerful. The fact that we can pull our average up from, you know, like 10 up to 43 or even like higher, because we're not even that well built up here in Korea. This is an impressive thing, and I think this is going to be a really useful thing for a lot of countries before you have built up a large economy, or if you have run out of labor, just being able to smack down, a slap down a whole bunch of these, especially because when you get a mass migration, like if we would get one in Guanbuk, this actually makes uh, the province ineligible, and so it's not calculated in the average. So what you can do is then you can just move the migration edict down to the next most attractive one, say Shangzi, and in this way, uh, slowly massage out as much mass migration attraction as possible. So it might be the strategy that we're still experimenting with this. It might be the case that you want to like have, um, you know, three uh, mass migration edicts and then only like eight incorporated territories and then you just continually juggle them around these edicts uh, so that you are forcing mass migration attraction so that you have really high average because this seems to be the new driver and again needing some experimentation we'll see how this plays but we're hoping to like really push a lot of migration with Korea which is why it's a shame that you know Qing has closed borders because we're not going to be able to siphon off from them and so we would much prefer uh, that they had open borders so this is something we experimented with a little bit on stream and we had some difficulties with it and that was we like got insta occupied and this raised this curious question will multi-landings work again and it seems like multi-landings are going to be working again we tried a ton to just land venezuela kind of normally and then we decided hey we're going to land a big stack in the middle here tie up their army and then put in some small stacks and this has worked out for us uh, we've managed to secure a front um, we're landing over in two spots and so uh, i'm guessing that it's going to tie up the army and then we're going to be able to push and so we it seems like multi landings are somewhat back on the menu um, they won't fully work but they will work well enough to allow you to overcome um, more than one thing and the way that this works or more than one um, or to overcome a defense you otherwise ought not to be able to overcome and the way this works is there's an initial landing right here and this is the one that's coming through um, where it's you know a decent stack versus a decent stack and this ties up the army so they cannot defend against another another landing these guys have two stacks if we tie up two of the stacks um, then we can get in for free on the other one because they cannot be participating in multiple battles at once uh, it used to be that these navy landings happened at a slow enough pace in between battles that what would happen is you would just lose one battle and then they would end up catching the other battle and so you'd only get a little bit of progress on the landing progress. You'd get like 25% and then they'd catch you, you know, trying to sneak around and they'd kick you back down to 0%. But since it happens at a good enough rate and you are occupying at a de decent enough pace, it seems that while multi-landings are not like how they were in 1.4 where you just get everything for free, that they are kind of back on the menu. I don't know if there was a uh, deliberate change. Um, we will, of course, just start assigning guys to some of these fronts uh, in order that we could kind of just push through. I think that we'll just do a whole bunch of this. Uh, these guys are navally invading. These guys are navally invading. I think we'll just actually... Hmm, maybe we cancel this one because this is the one that has like no boats uh, or very little boats and then this frees up these guys and we'll just push in here uh, but we kind of had no business actually enforcing on Venezuela here and it looks like this is exactly what we're going to be doing okay so we have been researching central archives for a while now and we are at nearly 10k and the way that uh prices work on innovation is that you will get a penalty for unresearched technologies in the previous era. We are getting 5k penalty for two unresearched texts, but once we research this text, these penalty go away. So this would cost 10k. It would be just about complete if 
medical decrees and banking were already researched. What we're going to do is we're actually going to swap to corporate charters. And what will happen is as we finish medical degrees and then banking, then we'll swap back, we'll finish central archives, and then we'll get corporate charters just a little bit faster in order to get the really strong company. We could go for egalitarianism, which very importantly gives a new tax uh, system that's really strong. However, it's not going to be very strong for us because early on, land-based taxation is going to generate you a lot. If you have a ton of peasants, we have a ton of peasants, and you can see that this actually wouldn't even generate us any more money. Um, we are in particular going for central archives because obviously we're having a problem with the bureaucracy. But even if we didn't have a problem with the bureaucracy, we would still want to be increasing our institutions uh, at least up one level, which is going to be a hefty bureaucracy investment. And so this is going to be pretty valuable for us and it will allow us to get more literacy uh, and start coming on up. But once we get to the point uh, where we have handled this and will be trying to make money, although we are in kind of a little bit of a rough spot in that regards. Um, I think we're going to be pushing the universities. We don't have too many universities right now. I think the Rev yeah, deleted some of our universities, which is big sad. And so once we get these uh, up and going again, then uh, we should be able to start playing the catch-up game on the technology. But for now, uh, we're playing in this way, uh, where we are not completing the text and trying to make sure that we um, you know, don't uh, waste any of our innovation because right now we're not getting a ton of it and so we're going to be trying to be a little bit more efficient all right so here we are kind of making moves we're covering a little bit and we get a nice little offer here france is offering to take on our debt in exchange for an obligation now what we can have to lose from this is them swaying us into the market instead of the french or sorry instead of the british this seems fine enough uh we're going to give them an obligation they are going to take on our debt and we are going to feel nice and safe it wasn't an enormous amount of debt it was several million but uh this is going to be quite nice for us and we are going to be able to off the back of this probably add a bit of construction just as soon as we you know clear out the bureaucracy deficit uh we're still waiting on kind of the tech things to come through to be fair it would perhaps be better for us to just go medical degrees banking into central archives um but I think we've already started on corporate charters, and so we're going to be looking to get that company. Also, that company is really, really strong, and so getting that in will be pretty nice. We're pushing here in, um, oh, what is this, in uh, SIAC. Um, our domain is mainly over here. We did subjugate Transvaal, didn't mention it. We subjugated them because they've already started. Um, here, we'll improve relations. They've already started to colonize, and so it's a lot of infamy to take both states. And to be fair, it takes a while for gold to appear anyways, and this is the primary thrust. And if gold had already appeared, maybe we go directly for it but without gold appearing we're just going to take it a little bit slow um, we do have uh you know both venezuela and argentina and so things are coming along quite quite nicely for us in the expansion uh you know sphere so we will yet again come to mexico's defense this is kind of a common play pattern because very often you can eventually sway mexico to become a subject uh depending on how things shake out and so we'll offer support in exchange for an obligation it's a little bit tempting to go for something to break up america but um, this is probably not going to play out the way we want, uh, so something like Liberate Subject uh, for, you know, uh, New England, something like this is probably going to be too hard to enforce, as is War Reparations, if they didn't even put them in already. I mean, maybe War Reparations is enforceable, American War Reparations would be quite nice. Let's go for it. If if we if we end up enforcing on the USA, it will be for war reparations. A much more likely scenario is going to be just a white piece, uh, but we will side our way into this four, uh, and we will move some guys on defensive posturing on over to the front. We are hoping that uh, last time the UK did most of the heavy lifting, uh, we are hoping to be able to get something done over here with a little bit of help. And maybe we can do some creative landing in order to actually, you know, kind of enforce this, in which case war reparations will be pretty nice. Um, it's unfortunate we're not gonna be able to start our own war or it's unlikely. Actually, you know what? We can enforce this war. And then look for a war uh, for ourselves. This, this part is not really important, the opening their market. Uh, and then we will just need to uh, capitulate out of this one. And then we'll be able to find ourselves a nice little war. That way we do keep decaying. Because if you're not using your infamy decay, you're losing it.
So for our infamy war, we ended up going after Benin, and they just backed down, which was not too much of a trouble. I think we're going to be concluding this episode here, though, and pick up uh, with this USA war later. Uh, in this episode, we largely kind of popped off as a result of getting, you know, onto laissez-faire. This was a huge one. We drained the investment pool down about 1.5k. It's still slowly draining. This is kind of uh, about, I think, where we want it. We're going to add a little bit more construction. We managed to get up to 100 construction. We solved this huge bureaucracy problem and we did make some moves in terms of expansion you know we subjugated uh you know argentina uh venezuela uh transvaal and orania this episode which will all be highly productive for us later kind of really setting ourselves up in terms of getting the ball rolling we are messing around or kind of uh, playing around with some migration ideas uh, in terms of intermarket migration it does seem to be the case that you could discriminate on either the basis of cult uh, culture or or religion and still pull in intermarket migration now. Um, so this is a significant change. We have managed to form some cultural communities and we are getting some stuff do going. We are more likely to form cultural communities while we do have these greener grass active and we've been doing this on the mainland with the idea that we kind of want to eventually have this building tall idea, although we have yet to get a mass migration attraction, which I think it's possible that it requires, we have to double check um, or try and figure out what exactly mass migration attraction or mass migration will require. Uh, but but we are thinking that it is overall a winner-take-all affair. I think it is quite a bit stronger um, on Europeans uh, in general. But if we look at mass migration attraction, we will see that, uh, you know, okay, the USA is getting some, Mexico is getting some, Peru, Bolivia is getting some. And if we look at who has the most... Um, we're not quite there yet, uh, but we're hoping to get there. Um, uh, really pulled, being pulled down by Shangzi and Beijing. Um, this kind of expected for a little while because of the massive unemployment. And so this is why ramping up construction is going to be so, so important for us, um, you know, in the coming episodes. But for now, we have a nice power base. We're on laissez-faire. We're on a whole bunch of laws that we want to be on. Um, kind of done most of the reforms in particular. We'll talk about this next episode, but we're going dedicated police. Even though we can't quite afford it from the bureaucracy perspective mainly because we want to make these guys happy enough that they don't rev when we try and pass uh, some laws that they don't like so this is the plan i hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe you know do the youtube algorithm thing and have a good day